Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and WebcastOneLive.com. Welcome. My name is Reich Plekis, and I am glad to be back after a week off. I tell you, Pastor Stephanie Moody and Lynn Montgomery uh, and Bob Montserrat, I have to give him a shout out. He's in the studio. They just carried the show last week, and what a blessing. Um, I, I missed out. I was buffering from my phone, but it was a blessing. Um, I am glad to be in the studio, and Ryan is uh, at the controls, of course. I have to give a couple of shout outs uh, here. So I, I wrote them on Facebook so I can remember them. I want to give a shout out to Bishop. George uh, McCutcheon, he's birthday today, and my sister from another mother, Anita Wilson. What's up, girl from Chicago, St. Louis? And my baby girl, Laura Plekis, turned 20 yesterday. Happy birthday, Saints. Anyway, I am glad to be back in the studio, 99.3 FM radio and WWW The View from the Pew. 3 p.m. Wednesdays and Thursdays, we come here, we bring you the best gospel artists, authors, pastors, apostles, bishops, and people from the pew, just bringing you the concise word of God or music either way, and also street sermons every now and then. Please forgive me for my uh, disravelness. I'm, I've been uh, desperately seeking my computer, which got lifted Friday night at the Smallwood event, but we'll forgive that person in time. I have in the studio with me today, Elder Damien Rudis from Learning of the Lord, Church of God in Christ, right here in Des Moines. And we're going to talk about, we're going to finish up on deliverance, uh, kind of what we've been going through this this month, but also the missions trips that you've been on and um, what what's going on at Learning of the Lord here in Des Moines. And just we'll just touch a tidbit on what happened Friday night because you were there and experienced everything. Bob, how are you? I'm going to say hi. Oh, very good. Very good. And you, and you sat in Friday for Mac. You took over the show. Yep. Sure did. Mm-hmm. Did you have church by yourself or did you have a guest I with you? I had a you? guest. I had a guest and even Ryan knew who that guest was. Who was that? It was Bob Chanka. I don't know Bob Chanka. Well, someday you will. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I will get introduced. Welcome, welcome. Elder Damien, Friday night was Richard Smallwood in Des Moines. Yes, yes. And the music was hot and the worship was high, wasn't it? It was an awesome experience. If you missed it, Don't miss the next one. It was an awesome experience, an awesome move of God uh, from our worship to our guests from Omaha, from Chicago to Richard Smallwood. God had his way. You know, I think that's probably the best way to have put it. God had his way. You know, um, Grace United Methodist was so willing to work with us and they were awesome. Um, I know that about 17 people from their congregation joined us and they were a little bit more mature in age and demeanor than myself. Um, but uh, one lady said to me, she took me by the hand and she said, now, son, is the choir going to sing soon? It's a little bit loud in here. And I said, yes, the choir is going to sing because it was during Andre Crittenden. Yes. And she said, OK, now, um, is it a is it an African-American choir? Is it all little students from Africa? And I said, no, it's not little students from Africa. I said, it's it's a, a mixed choir from here in, in uh, central Des Moines. And um, I tell you what, it was such a blessing. We had about about 40 in the choir. Yes. And I think I counted about 11 or 12 different churches represented. Church of God in Christ, Baptist Church, um, there was non-denominational yes. church, and um, uh, there we was had some Lutheran there. Church, Lutheran of, Lutheran Hope. church yes. of Hope was there. Yes. Uh, there was white, black, Hispanic, um, biracial, if you want to call it that, or yes. mixed. I hate the word mixed because paint is mixed. Right. Nobody's mixed in Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, the worship was just awesome. And um, like uh, Elder Damien said, if you missed out, don't miss the next don't one. miss it. Because it was a blessing. So with that being said, we're going to move on and move in and go on up. Tell me, you're originally from Chicago. Yes, I'm a Southsider. A Southsider. I'm a Southsider. 
What, what part of the South Side? 122nd in Aberdeen. Okay, yeah, I'd say yeah. you're from the South Side. Yeah, I was born in Roseland Community Hospital. All right. Yeah, I love Chicago. That's okay. my home. And how long have you been in Des Moines? We have been here since 1990. My mother is from here. This is her home. And and so we came back to get away from the gangs and the violence, uh, uh, as she called it, because she thought we were getting in a little too much trouble. But God was good to us and brought us here, and we've been ministering in the city ever since, since 1990. And, and God just does miraculous things and great things and learning of the Lord as he's doing all over the city. I think God is setting us up for a powerful move of God if we will, as the body of Christ, just move with God. Move with God. Let God have his way. Amen. Amen. Now, um, I know that learning the Lord has actually had two or three different locations yes. in the city since I've been here, and I've been here my entire life. Didn't they start out on 6th Avenue? Yes, we started in, it used to be called Another World Lounge at 1626th Avenue. It's now the City of Des Moines Community Action Office, actually. And we started in an old tavern there. And and my mother and Pastor Lenore Jackson, my mother, Pastor Suzanne Holmes, everybody calls her Sister Susie. They sure do. So they know her around the city. And they started that in March of 1990. And since then, God has taken us from that humble beginning to just yesterday, we had a pastor visiting us for, at our church from Panama, and we sent back f- food and clothing and toys, you know, and we have nine countries that we support now, orphanages in nine countries where we send food and clothing and toys. And it's just awesome to be able to see how God is blessing people all over the world from our little ministry there at 1216 Forest. And how long have you been in that location? Because that, when I was growing up, that was a couple different things. It was a funeral home. It was something else prior to Estes. I, I always remember it being Estes. So yeah. I don't remember, but I heard it was something before that. I think it, was it was a detail shop or something like oh, that. Oh, probably so. Probably so. Uh, uh, we have been there since 2002. In 2002, the Lord blessed us uh, uh, through uh, through a Mr. Fred Nichols. And at that time, the Nichols Estes Funeral Home. And they, and and we, and we, and we went in and we just, you know, we weren't even looking that that would be a potential location. But Mr. Nichols contacted us and has worked with us graciously since that time. And we've been there, uh, been there just ministering in the city. And we are an inner city ministry. That's what we are. We are about mission and we are about reaching the unchurched. Those that didn't grow up in church, they may not dress, you know, the way church people would, you, you know, that they didn't, uh, they come from the streets, may have drug addiction. Uh, uh, we've had homelessness, a, homelessness drug addiction, prostitution, prostitution all alcoholism, of that. everything. And we welcome them because God is a God of deliverance. Come on now. That is our God. Our God is a God of deliverance. And we have to, and we have to, Apostle Andre Brooks said something to me one day, and I found it so profound. If we would stop trying to pastor our individual churches and pastor the city, we would see more people saved for Christ. We would see more people coming in because that's what God is looking for. Jesus spent his time with the less fortunate. Jesus spent his time with the downcast, with the outcast. Those that society would have deemed unacceptable. That's where Jesus went. And if we want to see the body of Christ grow, whether it's a learning of the Lord, whether it's at miracle life, whether it's at new friendship, church of God in Christ, whether, whether it, it doesn't matter the denomination, doesn't matter the church, we're going to have to get outside our walls and go into the highways and the hedges and compel men to come. Now, you see a lot of things, <clears throat> excuse me, you see a lot of things being an inner city ministry. Yes. I mean, you could see gang bangers, the prostitutes, the drug addicts, like we said, but also you can see the gospel truly at work there. I know that there's gospel Fridays in the Evelyn Davis Park, yes. correct? Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, I haven't had as as yet actually the chance to go and be a part of that. Now, back when they first began some years ago, I used to go and preach there, preach in the park and do things like that. And what I'm finding is it's like people from the church imagine that people from the world, you know, we have these two points of views, you, you, you know, but they don't want God. They're not in the church, but they want God. They just don't want our religion. And sometimes that's an unpopular statement, but it's the truth. They want God. They just don't want sometimes our form of churches. We try to give it to them, but they're seeking truth. And you have young people who really want to come in and they want to know God, young, old, black, white, Mexican, uh, uh, Asian, whatever they're, 
uh, whatever their race, whatever their ethnicity, they want to know God. And when you present them the gospel, it changes lives. And you see gangbangers with their hands lifted. And you see prostitutes crying out because you don't know why they're in that situation. But Jesus is the only deliverer. And if we give Amen. them Jesus, that's what they want. If we give them Jesus, it cha- I've seen God do great things, change their life. And that's what we love seeing. God is changing people's lives. Amen. I know you've seen a lot of funerals just recently. Yes. Here in the, the city, especially. Um, and I hate to say street people because they're not any different than me. Nope. You know, it's just that they may not be affiliated with any certain church right. as much as I may be. But um, do you feel as though that the the doors of church may be conceived as being closed right now to people that they're not as welcoming because they, maybe they don't look as, uh, I'm not, don't, I don't want to say lily white yeah. as, as presentable, right, exactly. as presentable. I know? think, I think the concept of the church, I think the church should be given accolades in this respect. As the concept is changing, I I think that people in the church are hearing programs like yours and people who are out on the street, and I think they're taking heed because people are being more welcomed in the church. And and people from the street, you kind of hear it. They kind of they are feeling more at home in the church. And that's what they ought to, because that's where if we want people to really get delivered, we must welcome them however they come. Basically, How, church not as usual. Right. However, uh, I spoke at, I had the privilege to speak at Mount Hebron Missionary Baptist Church Sunday morning where the Lord really poured out powerfully where Pastor Billy Young is the pastor there. And, and, I, and, and one of the things the Lord was expressing to them is church as usual is done, and we have to know that. Church as usual, church is 10, 20, 50. Now, yes, there are traditions we should hold on to, but church as usual is not drawing people. We need, we need a met- I'm not saying change the gospel. I'm not saying change standards. But what I am saying is you got to look at your methods. And you got to see how are you reaching this? Is our message still relevant? Is our worship relevant? Is it relevant to this generation? And that's an important thing we must look at, whether they're in the church, whether they come from the street, because people will come if the worship is relevant. I think that's so true. And Bob, what do you think on that? I mean, I think that there's probably... People that you could reach that I wouldn't be able to reach, and people that Elder Damien could reach that neither you nor I could reach. Yeah. Do you think that that's a true statement? That well, absolutely. I mean, we all have a different uh, group of people that we're going to meet with. We're all in. We have different occupations. We're we meet different people, so we're just going to be a light wherever we are. So yeah, that's the way it is. So uh, you you sometimes might be able to cross over to a different group, but it, does, it doesn't matter what you think. It's where the Lord leads you. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Awesome. Well, I tell you that I um, was in, involved with a inner city ministry for seven years, and it was a totally different mentality. Um, you know, being a, a transient in my work uh, right now, you, you could um, come in and sit down in the ballroom at the the hotel one Sunday and get cussed out by somebody because they think that they got saved in that seat the prior Sunday before, and they think that that seat is the electrified seat, that that's how they <laughs> felt the warmth of Jesus Christ in their heart, yes. you know? And so I, I, fine, sister, I'll get up, I'll get out of this <laughs> seat, and I'll move across the aisle, you know? And and um, so you just have to have a different mentality, a different mindset of thinking outside the box and how to reach these people and how to touch them and how to, how to open yourself up to them. Um, you know, my brother, I'll just say it. My brother had some days. I mean, we had people call up our, our furniture stores and Western auto stores and our paint stores. And they used to say, um, I bought me $3,000 worth of furniture out of the back of the truck for $450, but I didn't get my warranty card, you know, (laughs) and my brother was selling furniture out of the back of the truck to support his habits, Mm -hmm. you know, and, um, it took a different mindset to reach my brother in 1983. He he got saved under um, Pastor Crabtree at First Assembly. Oh, mm-hmm. First Assembly. Yeah. Wow. So we are with Elder Damien Rudis from Learning the Lord Church of God in Christ. We're going to go to a station break shortly after this, and we're going to come back a more view from the pew in 99.3 FM. My name is Reich Plekas. Tune in, turn on, turn it up. We'll be back right after this. I'm glad I'm here. I needed this so badly this week. Tune in. We'll be right back after this.
choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. Yes, now your favorite programs on Webcast One Live can all be watched and listened to on any Android or Apple device. Your phone, tablet, or iPad. Yes, your favorite shows on Webcast One Live are available live or on podcast wherever you go. Let me introduce to you some of our great shows. I'm Michael Libby. I'm the host of Insight on Business, the News Hour. We're seen live at 8.45 each Monday morning at Webcast One Live or whenever you want on my blog or on the Internet. So what qualifies me to talk about advertising, marketing, and consumer trends? Well, it's my business. Inside Advertising, Marketing, and Communications has helped dozens of companies, small, medium, and large, learn how to use advertising correctly. And we pass that information on to you each and every week. Well, hi. Uh, my name is Mike Ahmed, and uh, I host the show Bridge the Gap Ministry. Our vision is, is to bridge the gap between cultures, and what we use, we use the Word of God. And uh, because His riches in that Word and the wisdom is what brings us together. So we learn the Word, we speak the Word, and we practice the Word on this show every Thursday. Don't miss it. I'm looking forward to seeing you. So when you want to watch your favorite Webcast One program, remember, there's an app for that. You know, there's an app for that. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Whether you're 10, 25, 50, 80 years old and beyond, everyone needs to live within their means. I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America. For almost a quarter of a century, we've helped people of all ages learn to manage their personal finances to benefit them far into the future. When problems arise, we've got the experience you need to make those debt problems go away. Got financial problems? Call Consumer Credit of America. Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and webcast1live.com. We are back, Reich Plekis, and I just received some uh, saddening news. I want to give a shout out and also condolences to the Krauss family for uh, the passing of Bill Krauss. He has been a life source in this community. Yes. Also to Betty Hill, Betty Swander of Valley Junction, Historic Valley Junction. Actually, she's been a very dear friend of mine and my family's uh, for over 35, 40 years. I'm 50 years old. So we want to lift both those families up at this time and uh, just be with them in their prayers. And Lord, just um, give them the peace that passes beyond at this time, please. We have a caller on the line and we're going to take that call at this time. Thank you and welcome back to The View from the Few. My name is Reich Plekis. Who do I have? Hi, uh, Frank. Hey, Frank. Welcome. How are you? Oh, good. Um, there's a trend that's kind of concerning me as a, as a Christian, and I, I see that some churches out there seem to be relaxing standards and trying to mold their their message to more to a worldly standard than to a godly standard. God doesn't care, nor do I care, what draws a person to God. But if it never moves beyond what's drawn them to a personal relationship with the Savior and accepting him as a personal Savior, you know, the, the relationship's empty. 
I mean, you can come to, 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 to run from suffering, uh, persecution. Sometimes you run to church, you find persecution. But God doesn't care what's, what's drawing you, what's bringing you, what's getting your foot in the door. But if it never moves beyond that, and I don't want to see churches just preach a message to fill the pulpits. I want to see a message preached to change hearts, to deliver people from sin. And I think too much of, uh, you know, uh, sin is getting left, and it's just come to church and feel good about yourself. Uh, so I just want to see how you felt about that. Elder Damien, do you want to answer that? I I think, Frank, God bless you. I, I, I think that our problem when it, as it relates to that is we don't worship on purpose and we don't worship with purpose. If I come to church and I am, whether I'm the minister, whether I'm in the choir, whatever, whoever I am, if my worship is on purpose and with a purpose, deliverance will happen. If deliverance is not happening, there are many there are many things we could attribute it to. There are many things we could look at and say, well, this is why maybe the word wasn't right. Maybe it was this. Maybe it was that. But if we go back to the core of when I come to church, I come to ease, I come to worship on purpose, and I come to worship with a purpose, then lives can't help but be changed. Now, I definitely agree with you that we must make sure that when we preach the word, we are preaching the word. Not just that that is socially acceptable, not just that that is politically correct, but preaching God's word because the word will save, and the word is what will change people's well, lives. Well, would you agree that man has a natural desire to worship? No, if he doesn't, I, I worship, don't agree with that. This is right. Well, I would say, let me finish, and then you, you can say whatever. I think man has a natural desire to worship. If not God, he's going to end up worshiping something else. Greed on Wall Street. That, that uh, I can go with. The, the, you know, the, in other words, you're going to turn your natural desire, your natural God-given desire to worship into worshiping things. And, and, and things that are, 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 are not worthy to worship. I'm, I'm simply trying to make the point that, that as Christians, if we have a church, we have an organization, and we have open sin in our congregation, we have open sin... I'm not talking about people we're trying to indoctrinate and invite into the church, but if we've got established church members who are engaged in open sin, the church doesn't do anything about it, doesn't call it out, doesn't call sin what it is, that church I don't find is going to have much spiritual growth. I have to remember one thing is that the the pastor is still a man. And um, Apostle Garland Scott said this a few weeks back and, and uh, Bob, correct me, because I, I know you were here the day, but he was talking about turning from religion to relationship. Absolutely. And he said that you you are a man or you are a woman, and until you take that, that thinking from your head to your heart and turn it from a religion concept to a, having that relationship with Christ and knowing that the person that's in front of you is just a presenter. They just are a vessel. They are not to be put on a pedestal. They are not to be worshipped. They are just the the conduit, the the network between the Word of God and us as the congregation. That we are to take what they give us and interpret. They are not. They are not the Word of God. They are just the messenger. And so, um, I think so many times we look at. And I've been in. The, I've only been in church twenty five, twenty six years. I didn't grow up at church. I grew up at the golf country club. And so when you said that, you know, it's our, our intuitiveness to worship, I can understand that, but not, not just to worship Christ because we didn't do that growing up. But I think that once that a person decides to take that theory from religion and turn it into a relationship and have a desire and seek deliverance and walk out their life in Christ, I feel as though that then that's when that changes or morphs or, or becomes more so of a intuitiveness to do the right things and make the right decisions. Now, we, we all know, we all know that we don't make necessarily make the right decisions. Somebody took my laptop Friday night. We Spiritual have, growth. It's always, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be a hundred percent all the time. We have another caller right now. All right. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Pastor Moody. I, I know you're calling in. Pastor Stephanie. Yes, I'm here. Hey, how are you? Doing great. 
I wanted to, you know, kind of touch on what you all were talking about. Apostle Guy and, and I were having a conversation on today. Come on, bring about it. The, about the quality of the word. And, you know, something that Frank mentioned that's very critical is the fact that, um, you know, he's concerned about the churches not holding people accountable, watering down the word. And so we have to be so careful of that. We cannot water down the word. We've got to go ahead and say what it is. Period. Make it plain. Make it plain. Exactly. And if we tell people the truth about what the word says, what that's going to do, the word is going to convict that person. That's right. It's going to prick their heart. And it's going to cause change to happen within them unless they're being stiff necked So that is a choice that they have to make. The pastor can only do so much. As a pastor, I tell you, um, when it comes to, and he mentioned, established church members. Um, with established church members, that means I've built a relationship with you, and I have all rights to rebuke you at that point. And, and, and you rebuke me often, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Because what, the, what we have to remember is the way that we behave on a day-to-day -day basis is going to make the difference whether or not people's lives are changed, whether or not they see the gospel coming from us. So it's going to take for us to walk in a way, not a religious nature, but a, a relationship nature with God, where everything that we do, when you're in a relationship with someone, I know with my husband, I want to please him. I want him to look at me and go, oh, baby, thank you for doing that for me today. And I have that same mentality when it comes to me and God. And so I we have to walk in a way that's pleasing to God and, and showing people how much we love him. That'll change the way that they look at him. And not God will reward you too. Yeah, I think, I think you hit, I think you hit sister. God bless you. Love you. Glad to hear you. I, I think you hit upon a, a, a powerful point, Pastor Moody, that our behavior is the evidence of our relationship. That's right. Absolutely. And, and I think the church must go back. We have, and, and, I, and, and I often call it what you call a cheap grace. We have taught a cheap grace that you know God loves you, everything is wonderful, and, and, and God's going to cover it, God's going to fix it, and God is going to do all of that. But where is my part? This is a relationship. That old song, yeah. Jesus can't work it yeah. out. You know? uh, this is a covenant. So where is my part of the covenant? That's right. What That's am right. I doing in my covenant relationship with God? How am I living? How am I talking? What am I wearing? Yes. Am all, I accountable? All of this is important, and not necessarily, you know, to know certain religion, to know certain denomination, but like, but like Pastor Moody said, between me and God, when I go out, how I look represents God. What yes. I say represents God. Where Absolutely. I go represents God. And anything I do, I want to please God with it. And if that is not my mentality, because we can all sit and look at, at different folks, and I appreciate Frank, but I wanted to say to him as well, we who live in glass houses should not throw stones. What am I doing? How but am that's the problem, uh, Elder Roots. Yes, ma'am. As leaders, we should already be past all of that. Amen. And I don't think Frank was was coming from the mentality of being in a, no, a glass house no, at all. I think house, no. I think that he he was given a viewpoint that sometimes that that's how things are viewed. And that's what I'm and, saying. And, Absolutely. And I I have to say sometimes you know I was really offended Friday night when somebody stole my laptop. Sure. I was like, you know what? And Pastor Moody, you were there. You know how high the worship was. Mm -hmm. You you know how thick it was. You could cut it with hedge clippers. You know, that took there. a lot of gall for somebody to come in that type of an atmosphere and steal. That's right. That and, couldn't have been nothing but the enemy. And walk out of that place in the anointing that was there. Yeah. And think that they were deserving. And they will need us who know God to especially be in prayer for them. Because what kind of mentality do I have that while God is moving, when I read the book of Chronicles, this says when the glory of the Lord filled the house, the priest couldn't even stand yes, to minister. minister. That's right. Not only yeah. could you stand to minister, you they, could stand to steal. That's right. So where right. are you with God that God is in the house moving so powerfully? Yeah. And that's where your mind is. Yeah, but that's kingdom worship because we Absolutely. recognize that we're kings and priests. We have that relationship with God and an understanding of the word. When you know that you're a king and you know that you're a priest and you enter into that worship with him, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. 
And so that person has not come to that understanding. And that's why I've been working with Rikers, you know, and, and others about forgiveness. Yes. Letting it go. And see, these are the things that I'm talking about. As leadership, we can't be willing to compromise. No. You know, whether you know it or not, being on this view from the pew, you are leading people to a Absolutely. place. Absolutely. So the way that we walk, the way that we talk, the way that we speak, the way that we respond, even to how our enemy treats us. It's so critical. And and I got to let the public know. She called me up and said, let it go. Let it yeah, go. Yeah. Somebody's already already got me a new computer. It's already en route. It's Amen. the it, it's the information that's in yeah. the computer that I didn't back up of my own stupidity. Forgive me, Lord. You know, it's it's password protected. But, you know, um, and this I wanted to ask you about this and stay on the line, Pastor Moody. Um, okay. Elder Rudis. Your mother is your pastor. Yes. How do you handle rebuke? Because I tell you what, when my mom gets up in my face sometimes, I just got to be like, Mom, I'm 50 years old, you know. Well, I just like to say on the radio that my mother scares me to death. <laughs> I, I just like the world to know that. I got to tell you Lord. this. I got to tell you this. <laughs> she scares me to death. <laughs> no, no, but you know what I've learned? Because she is my leader, and, and, and people often ask me, and some people say, well, you're there because she's your mother, because I'm there because that's where the Lord placed me. And so right. then and so then, when the Lord uses her in that pastoral position, I have to know the difference, and I have Amen. to pray. And it is, and it, is a hard, it is a hard relationship because we both have to pray to make sure, and she prays to make sure that when she does rebuke me, it's as my pastor. Amen. Amen. Stay on with us, Pastor Moody. I tell you what, um, the View from the Pew 99.3, right? Pleck is back in the studios. It is a blessing to be back. We were, are with Elder Damian Rudis and Bob Montserrat in the studios. Tune in right after this. We're going to have some more church when we get back right after this. But From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. From Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free. What type of work do you think we're gonna do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you gonna say that to a client? No. <laughs> You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family. You know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now and then leave and then come back, charge you again. And, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed the day. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. <laughs> 
Keep going though, I like this. <laughs> Just give us a try. I'm gonna take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do. I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. Welcome to The View from Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and WebcastOneLive.com. We are back. Reich Plekis, The Views from the Pew, also with Elder Damian Rudis and Bob Montserrat in the studio. I tell you, we um, are here at 99.3 and www, the View from the Pew on Wednesdays and Thursdays. It's a delight to be back in the studio with the Word of God. I have on the phone with me Sabrina Wisdom Brown, my sister from another mother over in Decatur, Illinois. What's up, girl? Hey, what's up, right? <laughs> hey, I also have Pastor Stephanie Moody, which she was sitting by you, I think, at, at, at Kim Burrell. Are you there, Pastor Moody? Yes, I am. And I, I got Sabrina Brown. She's got a TV and a radio show that you need to go over to Illinois with me sometime and get on that show. It's called Spotlight. What you got, awesome. Sabrina? Come on, bring it on. <laughs> well, y'all are touching a heavy, heavy subject. I love it. God bless you, man and woman of God. Um, first of all, you talked about believing in all, uh, people believing in a watered-down grace or teaching a watered-down grace. Um, I see a lot of people talking about reaching them where they're at. Um, my question is, what do you feel about uh, taking worldly things and bringing it into the church to draw? And um, I ask this because I see people lure people in with worldly things, and then they try to deliver them from worldly things. And I just kind of have a problem with that. Um, I personally don't think that there's a place for it. That's my opinion. That's my five cents, my 25 cent, my 50 cent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know me, but you also know that on bad days, I'll be listening to Beyonce and then I'll have to repent and start listening to something else. Lord afterwards. have mercy. <laughs> <laughs> so if that is my admission right here. Please pray for me continually. Amen. I will receive. Shambada, shambada. But anyway, um, See. you See. know, I, I will tell you this, that music, music was meant to capture the hearts and make a person a worshiper. That's why that's why the worshipers, the, the praise army was put in front so that it was to disturb, to distraught the armies and, and bring forth a, a sense of, um, help me out here, Pastor Moody, I don't know the word I'm looking for, um, but uh, to uh, create- Confusion, confusion in the thank with you. the enemy. Thank you, confusion to the enemy. And it's like that, you know, that uh, ability to uh, make them so such a state of mind that they don't know where they're going, how they're going to get there, and so forth. You know, it's uh, uh, kind of like going through the mist. You have to slow down so you can get from point A to point B. I think that the point that Sabrina makes is very powerful. And and I'm going to precursor my statement by saying this: I'm a holiness preacher, and that's what I am. And, and I believe that when we come into the house of God, it must be about God. And you're talking about music, and this is what we must understand about music. All music carries a spirit. That's right. Mm -hmm. So when the music, there is a purpose that the music was written. It, music is written to fit a certain mood, to fit a certain atmosphere. It has a certain purpose. So you cannot take music that is created to glorify the world. I don't care how many words you change. I don't That's even right. care. I, I don't even care how many times you change whatever they were saying and say Jesus. That music carries a spirit. You cannot bring the world into the church. And no. the other problem we face, as Sister Sabrina was saying, the other problem we face is when uh, the way you catch a fish, that's the way you got to keep it. So when you catch people worldly, and then they come into the church, and then, now that you've caught them in this way. They have that worldly expectation. Now you want to sick the mothers on them and the elders on them, and you want them to get saved. And they're saying, well, wait a minute. When I came, you said this was all right. This is how I came partying. You know, I came feeling good. 
And so now you want to teach them holiness. And, and now that person is confused. And then they become rebellious because they don't want to change because the way you got them was not right. You did not bring them in. And, and I don't care what denomination you are, holiness is right. And that's what we have to get to. And people will treat you and, and people will treat your God how you teach them to treat you and treat your God. So when you allow these things in the church, and I think you said it right, Brother Wright, there is no place for it. It's no excuse for it. If you want, either you want to be saved or you do not. That's right. And you got to be sick of sin to want to be saved. And you got to be sick of the world. You got to be sick of the devil. And if you're not, then we will continue to pray for you, but we will not lower, the church must go back. We will not lower the standard of the church to get people. Because the devil don't care how often you come to church if you never really get saved. He doesn't. He he don't care. He doesn't care how many people fill the pews if those people's lives are never really changed. And God is going to get us in the church. Judgment is going to begin at the house of God when we take God and lower Him to such a standard of Come worldliness on. to make people feel good, to make people give money, to make God going to judge us for that because yes. our job. We are God requires souls of us. Now, no, we can't save anybody. That's not what I'm saying. But God requires us to give them quality witness. God requires us to give them quality word. So then in turn, they can come and have a quality relationship with God. So we can't give them the word. Now, I know Pastor Moody, she'll teach to an audience of one or an audience right. of a million and one. And, and Sister Sabrina, she'll carry a 50-gallon drum of extra virgin olive oil on her back <laughs> with her to make sure that that person's walking out there deliverance and healing. That's right. You know, yeah. and, and, yeah. and Sabrina, tell me about, tell them about the ministry that you have over there, what you're doing. Well, basically, um, I'm bringing out the indie artists. The music has gotten so corrupt now. Absolutely. Um, it's so much perversion in the house of God and the music. And what I really looked at is that we need to bring some more artists around that's just not in the same little area and a little clique that you can get in. And I want to spotlight people's true ministries. It's a ministry even behind the music and the person. And I believe that that should be spotlighted because God heals us first, even through the process of our ministry of music. Sure he has healed and delivered and set free to even get them to the point of ministering in their writing. So I wanted to spotlight different ministries as well, not just music, but things that are special in God, ministries that have climbed up from the rubble and picked themselves up out of it and say, here I am, Lord, do what you want me to do. And, uh, you know, that's pretty much what we're doing over there. <laughs> but you, you are not afraid to tell a hoochie mama to pull her skirt down and tell a, a man to pull his drawers up. I, no, I've seen you. Not. I've seen you in action, <laughs> and Pastor right. Stephanie, she doesn't. She doesn't play that way either. Well, and I well, think we, we got to quit compromising. And that's, that's what it. it all comes down to. And that's what I was getting at before we took the break. Yes. The leadership has a, yes. has got to allow the word of God to prick your heart first. You should not be in a leadership position if you're not away from the world already. Because what's in the heart is going to come from the heart, and you're going to speak it out of your mouth. So if the world is still in you, that's how you're going to be grabbing people. And you can't you know? substitute stuff for, for the anointing, and that's no. what's happening. Now, but see, too many people are being tricked right. by that. Now, see, in the old church, as they call it, in the old church, oh, we saw deliverance. And them old people didn't play with you. That's right. Them old folk didn't play. I, them old, I come up under pastors like Bishop A.B. Carter, uh, God rest his soul. And, and, and them leaders, if you was not in right standing with God, you couldn't even testify. If you got up to testify, they want to know what you want to say. Are you going to repent first? Well, well, no, I just want to thank God. No, you don't got nothing to thank God for. That's right. We don't need no 15-minute sermon. And, well, and what they would do is they taught us, like Pastor Moody saying, they kept, they kept the standard high. And we must yes. take the standard back. And, yes. and then after the standard, there was anointing. And what we mm -hmm. have, and I'm not saying everybody, but it's just the truth. What we have is we have people who, who are not anointed. You can be called and not be anointed. You, you can sound good mm, wow. and not be anointed. You can have a hoop and not be anointed. And so then we substitute all this other stuff for the anointing. You and know so what that's the, called? Entertainment. Exactly. Ministry without anointing exactly. is nothing more than entertainment. Come on now. Come and on. That's what, and that's what Sister Sabrina is saying. She's seen. And what's important about music, and all ministry is important, but we must understand the music ministry is the only ministry that when Christ comes will transcend from earth to glory. The Bible says where there's preaching, it's going to cease. 
I tell you what, it is thick in here. Bob is typing like 60 words a minute or plus over here. I'm going to ask him when we come back from the break what he's typing about. We have uh, uh, Sabrina, Sister Sabrina Brown on the phone with us and Pastor Stephanie Moody from New Beginnings Discipleship Ministries. We are walking out deliverance Amen. here in June on A View from the Pew in 99.3. My name is Reich Plekis, and we will be back right after this. Tune in, turn on, turn it up. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drink, dance, party. Kitties is the ultimate dance club in Des Moines. A huge dance floor with room to move, three bars to keep your drinks full, and kicking DJs playing all your favorite dance music. At Kitties, we've always got your birthday party planned with Birthday Friday. That's right, when your birthday rolls around, there's only one place to go. Gather up your friends and head to Kitties, where you drink free on the Friday of your birthday week. Find out more about Birthday Fridays at kittiesusa.com. Kitties, all kinds of people, all kinds of music, all kinds of fun. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. If you choose to obey the power of sin, it leads to death. If you choose to obey obedience, it leads to righteousness. Forgiveness is just the beginning of life in Christ. God wants us to live for Him now. And because of Jesus Christ, the gospel was preached, and you and I are blessed today because of Abraham. Did you know that? We're blessed. Experience Truth, 99.3 FM. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Welcome to The View from a Pew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM. I'm your host, Reich Plekis, each and every Wednesday and Thursday from here on out on The View from a Pew.com and KTIA at 3 p.m. Join me as I present the greatest gospel artists, small groups, musicians, pastors, authors, apostles, and more, bringing to you the clear and concise word of God locally. Join me, www.theviewfromapew.com and KTIA Radio 99.3 FM at 3 p.m. I hope you'll join me to spread the word powered by GFest and WebcastOneLive.com. We are back. Reich Pleck is in 99.3 FM and the view from the pew. I tell you, it's getting hot in here. I am going to keep on all my clothes. That's a worldly <laughs> sh- That's a worldly song made religious right there, spiritual. We have got my sister Sabrina Brown on the phone and Pastor Stephanie Moody on the phone with me. And we are having some church. Of Elder uh, Damian Rudis from Learning the Lord, Church of God in Christ, and Bob Montserrat. And we are just talking about walking out our deliverance. I am going to give this shout out real quick. If you are in the city of Des Moines and you are tuning in or Central Iowa, tell your friends about this show on Wednesdays and Thursdays because this show is the the concise word of God. It may be a street sermon. It may be a street minister. It may be a street singer, artist coming forth. But I tell you what, we're not going to mix it. We're not going to dilute it. It's going to be truthful and right in your face. Amen, Pastor Stephanie. Amen. Amen. Also, I want to say August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, Apostle John Eckhart is coming from Chicago, yes. Illinois. This man is going to tear up the concrete in this city with not only his teaching, but his deliverance ministries workshop. He will be at New Beginnings Discipleship Ministries. You can find out more um, at uh, Iowa, Illinois Gospel Events uh, Facebook page, my Facebook page, Pastor Stephanie Moody's Facebook page, and, and you can find out more from, from us here. But anyway, but there's more to come. And I also call New Beginnings Discipleship Ministries Church for information on that. And I know that Eventbrite will be releasing information this week about that for Apostle John Eckhart coming into Des Moines August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. Elder Damien Rudis, Learning the Lord. You, missions, we were talking about that earlier. Yes. Every day is a missions trip for you in the city. I mean, you see everything. You've seen prostitutes. You've seen homosexuals. You've seen drug dealers. You've seen gangbangers. You've seen drive-by shootings. You see the people in the park. You see things that 
I normally may not see. It, how can we best reach these people? I think that the conversation we're having with Sister Sabrina and Pastor Moody yourself, and, and brother, I think the conversation we're having is what it is. If you will give people the truth, people want the truth in love. But if you give them the truth, people from the street, they already have, you know, the watered down stuff. You, you know, that doesn't reach them because when I leave church or when I leave my experience with somebody who's witnessing to me, do I have something that will hold me? And God's word is what will hold. It will bring true deliverance. And I have found, and this is the thing about people from the street, you got to really know your Bible to witness to them. I've seen drunk men who cannot preach. Me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've seen prostitutes who can quote more Bible than I can quote. So they know the word, but it is the anointing that would destroy that yoke, that genuine quality word. And when they know there are people out there like Sister Sabrina, like Pastor Moody, like yourself, like my mother, who will walk out with them truth. Give them truth. Give them God. Don't give them your religion. Don't give them your denomination. Don't give them your spin on God. Just give them the word of God. It will save them. It will change their life. Pastor Moody. Yes. You come from a fighting background. Can I say that? Yep. <laughs> I just did. Uh, do you think that there is a mindset from the, from the street mentality that mm -hmm. you got to be a fighter to meet a fighter? In a sense, yes, because the average person is intimidated by us because we're so direct in our communication style. That's right. And so, you know, you, you have a conversation with people and they've got these titles, but the second you want to confront opposition or anything like that, they, they go into a shell, so to speak. And yeah. so... Not everyone can minister to a person who came out of drugs. Not everyone can minister to a person who came out of uh, uh, sexual immorality, um, homosexuality, whatever it may be. It takes a person who understands and came out of that background to be able to minister to that background. It's like when um, people I know whose mothers have passed on or fathers have passed on, both of my parents are still living. I can empathize with you, but I really don't understand what you're going through. Right. So I will send in someone in my congregation that I know has already gone through it to help to minister to you. I can give you the words, but I don't know the word of God, but I don't know what you're feeling. Right. And it's the same thing when it comes to dealing with someone who came out of that background where I was in the streets. I was fighting all the time and drinking and getting high and everything else. You can't minister to me unless you understand what I've been through. And because that you don't know the struggle that I face on a day-to-day -day basis. And that testimony, Pastor Moody, that is the difference. We have to, I think that's another problem the church has. We come in church and get saved, and then we don't want to tell nobody where we came from. Yeah, that's right. And so then if I'm a sinner, when I come into church, I see everybody in these nice suits and these nice dresses and these nice hats, and I think, oh, I can't have this. But when that person gets up and say, we used to have what's called testimony service. Now, we had to quit having it because people quit testifying. No, people testified, te people testified about everything in their right. life. And well, everything, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. People quit testifying. Yeah. But when that person gets up, I remember my pastor in Chicago, Bishop Harold Sims. He would get up and he would talk about the things he used to do. And I'm looking at him like, he needs to stop playing. That man ain't never done nothing because of the way I see him now. But what it does, when they hear Pastor Moody testify, when they see her now operating in the gift of God, and then they think about where she came from, you know what it tells them? If he can do it for her, he can do it for me. I heard this the other night at the community forum. A lady got up and said, I invented slap a hoe Tuesday. You know, and oh, she Lord. said, but God brought, me, God brought me out of that because she said, I had to start asking for receipts for the weaves that were flying off these girls, you know? And so I, I think that there's a, a common sense about that, that, yeah. you know, when God brings you out, he brings maturity in. Yes. Um, I'm going to put Pastor Stephanie and, and Sabrina on hold. We're going to go to Elliot. He's got a question here on line three. Elliot, welcome to The View from the Pew. Hello. Quickly. Yes, uh, I was calling about uh, the idea of uh, this, uh, Perseverance of the Saints. Is this be for a different program or for now? Uh, I, I believe that, uh, well, we could talk about Perseverance of the Saints. We're talking about deliverance today. But I, I think that uh, Perseverance comes in after the deliverance takes place. Amen? Yes. Uh, my name is okay. Reich Plekis. Tune in tomorrow at 3 p.m. Thanks, Elliot. Going back okay. to Pastor Stephanie and Sabrina, I tell you what, it has been a blessing today. Elder Damien, 
learning the Lord, Church of God in Christ. I mean, you and I have just like come That's A right. to Z like this. That's right. uh, Pastor Stephanie and Sabrina, I, I love you. I love you both. And um, every day is a new day in Jesus Christ. And the, and the two of you, the two of you have helped me so much. Sabrina, Glory I know that God. you pray for me every day because you make comments on my page if it's not private. And you and I are walking this thing out together. All right. Jeez, we'll work it out, you know. But <laughs> I tell you what. And for the person that got my computer, call me up. I'll give you my cell phone. I'll give you the password. Just say you want to be forgiven. I tell you what, today's show has been a blessing. Amen. Elder Damien, we got a lot of work to do, don't we? Amen. August 1st, 2nd, and 3rd, I, Apostle John Eckhart is coming into this city. You do not want to miss it. You do not want to miss it. I want to give a shout out to my uh, Apostle Garland Scott coming in July 10th for Testify with Mac. Uh, Michael J. J. Michael McCoy out of Incredible Pizza. It's going to be a great time. If you want information, hit me up on Facebook. I'll get you a free pass. I'll buy your lunch. View from the Pew. It's been great today. A blessing. Right Plex. Until tomorrow, tune in, turn on, turn it up. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, just pray. <laughs>